Leslie Chilcott is the director of Behind This Film. She is a, an accomplished documentary film director and producer who is also behind um, some small films we've heard of called The In An Inconvenient Truth and Waiting for Superman. Um, Grace Mena, um, who you all, you all recognize and we are thrilled that you could make the trip. Uh, she's a founding member of the International Women's Coffee Alliance chapter in Costa Rica. She's one of the most reputable coffee exporters in Costa Rica and is responsible for the micro mill revolution that has taken place there. How did the story find you and what was it that really grabbed you about it? My husband and I have a small farm in Costa Rica where we plant trees. We plant trees. And uh, he does most of the, the tree planting, but I like to take credit for it. Um, and I had spent a lot of time in Costa Rica, and our sort of arrangement is that every year we're going to try and add a week in Costa Rica. So hopefully by the time the trees are mature, we will be living there for half of the year. But um, a company in LA called Greenlight, which is an independent digital content studio, actually reached out to me. Um, and the reason is, Iwi Coffee, who you see who buys their coffee in the film, always gets these amazing stories from their agronomists, like farmers they met in Vietnam or in Brazil. And one of the agronomists came back and was talking about this group of women that built a mill on top of a hill. And Illy had the foresight, and, and believe me, I was skeptical to work with a brand, especially with the type of films that I make, but they had the foresight to say, let's just tell this story. And um, Greenlight and Illy made it very clear to me that I would have the freedom to tell the story that I wanted to tell. I had Final Cut, which is actually hard, hard to get. Costa Rica was diversified from uh, the pioneers that it was Asamobi, the first micro mill, and it was women. So more and more micro mills are coming into place. So we have over 100 micro mills today. So that was, they started in 1999, and today we have over 100 micro mills. So um, most of these farmers are selling directly to the roasters in the States and other places, and they're getting very good prices. So that helps not only the farmer and his family, but also the community. And Grace, I think you mentioned too that if, if in a lot of instances where the women are sort of are working in the fields, but they're not um, sort of controlling the transaction, that often the men um, will get the money and then um, you know not necessarily return with that. And so that's sort of a critical yes. piece of And I would like to invite my friend Phyllis, that she's here. Phyllis and I uh, went to Africa together to work on the chapters in creating chapters in Africa. And Phyllis can tell you more about our experience in Africa. But <laughs> she is a great woman and I want you all to meet her. Oh Thank you so much. I'm studying at the Kennedy School, the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, trying to really understand the depths of what we're trying to do to help empower women. And um, it, it's very rewarding for those of us who are close to this because we do see the women using the dollars to go so much further. I mean, really to build their communities. All, all coffee is women's coffee for the most part because they're the ones working hard every day. And uh, I'm so pleased to see such a well-made film about this work. And Grace, thank you for this opportunity Tell have to me do about that. the experience you had. What did the women say in Africa? The women said, <laughs> 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 see, she's still teaching me. Um, <laughs> the women said, um, we went to a couple places. We were in Uganda, and uh, we talked to several women, and we asked, what, did the, what do people do with this coffee? Um, and one shy lady raised her hand out of about 200, and she said, I think they use it for bullets. I, I don't know. So to see this young lady from Asamobi travel to Trieste to see Italy produce their coffee is, is just amazing. So we have a long way to go. Um, any other stories, Grace? It's a story about what women do not get the money. What do the men do with the money? Yeah. The men do several things with the money. <laughs> this is where it gets I'm really good. So, I'm so glad you know her. <laughs> Um, yeah, the women, yeah, we were in a really nice setting, again, I think in Uganda, and um, the women said uh, they can do anything for, take on a second wife, go get, uh, spend the money at the local bar. So I'm just going to go summarize what I wanted to say. <laughs> Men take the money, they cash in the crop. Women do not have access to the money. They work on the coffee, but men go and sell it. They get the money, disappear for two days, get home, 
without a penny. So what are we trying to do? We want these women to have access to the economic resources. We want to connect these women in the rural areas with copy buyers like Phyllis. Phyllis is a copy buyer here in the US. And so they can have this connection and make sure women have the money in their hands. Why? Because they're not gonna spend it with other men. They're not gonna go out to the bars drinking and get home with a, without a penny. They will use this money to educate the children for health purposes and to give shelter to their family and to help the community. So we can not eliminate, but at least alleviate poverty in the world through coffee. Uh, the next film I'm gonna be doing is Okay, don't laugh. At least for now, this is the title. It's called Hashtag Girls in Tech, which I thought was really clever until I actually have to say it out loud, and I say it's Hashtag Girls in Tech. And it's a contest. It follows high school girls all over the world. There's a competition called Technovation, and these girls have 12 weeks, and they have no computer programming experience at all, and they have 12 weeks to write and create an app that solves a problem in their local community. And they get mentored either via Skype or at regionals from Silicon Valley, engineers, um, Fortune 500 companies. And when these 15 and 16 year old girls that didn't think they could program, like suddenly create this app that, that uh, for example, the winner last year was from Moldova and they actually created an app that tested for Hefe in their local water supply, which I didn't even know was possible. The year before, two years before the winner was, um, a team from the US, the girl missed the day in biology where you get to dissect the frog. Mm -hmm. And she thought, I'm never gonna get to do that again. So they made this layered animation where you could keep dissecting the frog. Mm -hmm. And just when a 15 or 16 year old girl learns that they have that kind of power, you, know, mm -hmm. you don't have a lot of choice. You're told a lot as a teenager. And if you learn to code, you can change your surroundings. You can change things that you don't like. Mm -hmm. So um, I am starting on that in January, so I guess I'm sticking with the female empowerment theme for a while. When I was younger and in the industry, it did not occur to me that I was female. In other words, even if I was working with 55, I started out producing TV commercials, and even if I was working with 55 men, I just it, it didn't occur to me that it was unusual that I was female. But when I started having in, investors on films that were from the corporate world or from certain places, and I noticed that I was getting this slightly different treatment. I realized, uh, I guess the shorter way to say it is, um, those of us that had moms that fought hard during the feminist movement, I think we grew up and we thought, well, we don't have to be feminist because that work is already done. And then as you get older, you realize, no, 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 there's all of these issues still going on. And, and like Emma Watson recently did, everybody needs to say that they're a feminist. I started studying the statistics and the statistics in film and television are no better than they were 25 years ago. Like, there's a couple exceptions, like in TV writing, and I think that's you know single-handedly because of a few women, like one woman who happens to own Thursday Night right now. But I, uh, I, uh, it, it's um, it, it's something that I think younger people shouldn't ignore, like I did. And I gotta hope it's getting better. But the numbers haven't changed in 25 years. What do you hope the the kind of the biggest impact from the film is? What if it can create any sort of ripple effect? Um, that's sort that's that's <laughs> I don't want to say that's realistic, but sort of a a react a response a reaction a call to action. Kind of what you said at the beginning. You know, when we all have our cup of coffee tomorrow, and maybe even for a whole week afterwards or longer, that we really think about how many hands did it take to make that cup of coffee? How many of those hands were women's hands? Um, how much work went into this? And as consumers. We have more power than you realize. You know, if you want to turn over your cup of your can of coffee or your bag of tea, in my case, and you read the back, and if it doesn't tell you where the coffee came from, you can you can demand to find out. I mean, the fair trade movement has been her very helpful in coffee and tea. But what I didn't know before making this film is that the farmers have to pay the cost of being fair trade certified. So while they might get more money, they have to bear the price of getting certified. So. I think fair trade has done an amazing thing because it's made us all ask that question and be more aware. But we need to go so much further. And I think with everything being linked and barcodes, you know, I, I dream of the time where you can scan the back of the coffee and it tells you all the ingredients, who the farmer is, where they're located, and um, I'm sure there's a company that's working on that right now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I hope so. If not a few. Yeah. Great. So I would really like to see other countries doing what Asamoah is doing in Costa Rica. I would like to see this example 
being replicated in other producing countries. Great. Well, thank you both for your time and thank you all for coming. Thank you.